as mathematicians would say, the argument is an argument by inductions. What I've shown you is the first, not completely obvious, inductive step of an inductive argument. So you take the ideas that go into this of using, well, I just was able to use just the pigeonhole principle, but for later versions, you need to use van der Verden's theorem for a, a shorter progression. Van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length two is very straightforward. As soon as you've got two things of the same color, you're done. So the pigeonhole principle can be thought of as being van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length two, because you know that if you've only got finitely many colors, eventually there'll be two of the same color. So in order to prove van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length three with two colors, I used the pigeonhole principle. So I was using van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length two. But how many colors was I using? Let's go back to a situation where I actually want not just the configurations to be the same, but the entire coloring of a block to be the same. So I had 32 ways of coloring with reds and blues. I can think of that as a sort of hyper coloring of the block. So each one of those 32 ways of coloring with red and blue is a sort of color of the whole block. Now, the block has 32 sorts of colors. So once I've got 33 blocks, I have two that have the same open inverted commas color. The exact same like fingerprint. Yeah, something like that. Sometimes it's known as an induced coloring. So you can imagine that with each way of coloring with reds and blues, you associate some color from a much larger palette of 32 colors. So I'm effectively using van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length two and a lot of colors to prove van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length three and just two colors. And the same thing happens um, when, you, when you go up. So for, for van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length four with just two colors, if you prove van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length three with a lot of colors, then you can, uh, you can do it. You can use that to prove van der Verden's theorem for progressions of length four and fewer colors. And in general, you have this um, slightly complicated, but not too bad, inductive argument that's based on this, the ideas that I've um, shown here. Is the canonical proof of this theorem what you just showed me, this kind of visual and simple almost, or is there like a more technical one that mathematicians would use that involves, you know, a few equations and a couple of pages of a paper? Um, well, if you read a proof in a maths textbook, it would look a lot less visual than this. Somebody might uh, decide to draw some pictures to illustrate it. Um, but it would be this argument. It would just be sometimes, uh, this is an unfortunate situation in mathematics, sometimes in order to be able to write an argument down on the paper. Sometimes paper is just not the ideal medium for explaining a maths result. Sometimes, you know, somebody will explain something uh, in a talk using a board and the ideas all seem very clear. And if you go back and look at the paper, which is the same argument, but presented in a less visual form using symbols and stuff, decoding what it says is, can be quite a difficult process. Um, you know what, this says to me that all proofs should be done by number file videos. You could have a point there. I mean, there is a case for saying that... Uh, I've sometimes wondered whether there could be a different form of mathematics literature where... A bit like more like science literature, where what the, the paper is just reporting on the proof. Uh, where the proofs would, play, would be... The analogy would be proofs correspond to experiments. So in a, in a science paper, you don't do the experiment in the paper. You just... Uh, you refer to it and... Uh, Similarly here, what maybe a paper would be some nice uh, intuitive explanation of the ideas and the proof would live somewhere else sort of online. You could go and refer to it if you don't believe the... Uh, I was going to say, otherwise you, yeah. know, you get yourself in a FMR situation no, no, where no, no, I you, proved it, but I just can't write it down for you. You have to have the proof written down somewhere, obviously, but the, 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 maybe the actual important part of the literature could be a, a real attempt to explain the ideas of the proof. Oh, I'd be, totally in, I'd be totally in favour of that. Yeah. <laughs> and proofs that I could understand. I must stress again that I'm not saying that we don't need proofs or anything like that. We certainly do, but uh, we need proper formal proofs. But um, sometimes that's not the most important thing. If you're trying to make progress in your own understanding, you don't always need the most formal version of an argument. Yes, but my name is there very discreet, you know. Here is the date. 2010, and here's my name. It's very small because, you know, we mathematicians are small in front of the mathematical accomplishment. This is pure gold, and this is Archimedes.